In this video, we will cover probably one of the most important topics related to making an architecture firm profitable and how to come up with the right fee to charge your clients and customers. Topics we'll cover include direct and indirect expenses, profit, overhead rate, break-even rate, revenue, hourly rates, and billing rates. Let's begin with a simple visualization, sort of like a three-layered cake. To visualize a typical fee for service and all the different costs that get associated with that fee. The first layer captures all expenses related to direct costs. These are billable to a project. This includes direct expenses, such as the cost of printing a construction document set for your project, and also direct labor, or the salary of all technical staff charging to a project. The keyword here is project. If you're delivering a product, it's any direct costs and direct labor that goes into producing that product, in our case, a building. The second layer is all non-billable expenses that include indirect expenses, such as maintenance of equipment in your office, rent, utilities, and also indirect labor, such as paying the salaries for admin, HR, and your marketing staff. This is also known as overhead. Overhead is the main concept to learn. The definition of overhead is total indirect expenses incurred to keep a business operating, whether or not any revenue is being generated. Our second main concept is breaking even. Breaking even describes this idea of how much project and business costs I need to cover to break even or to not be in the negative. With break even, there's no profit. It accounts for the salary of the employee as in direct labor, plus the amount of overhead attributed to that employee in the form of indirect costs. When you determine the break even rate, which we'll dive into the formula shortly, you'll essentially have a rate that you can use to determine for any new hire just how much you need to build a client to break even or to cover your business and your project costs, your total indirect and direct expenses in that first and second layer. The third layer is our favorite, that's profit. If we add the dollars from all three layers, then we get this concept of gross revenue, which is all the revenue generated from a business during some period of time. Here's a simple equation to relate all three layers of the cake. Revenue minus total expenses, which is the sum of your indirect and direct equals profit. A great way to control expenses is to reduce your overhead wherever possible. Another way to generate more profit is to increase the time spent on projects, or better yet, increase your fees to generate a higher profit. When we're setting a fee on a new project, it's important to know what personnel we will need to accomplish the project. Once we know all the various personnel on our team, begin by noting each individual's hourly rate. This is that first layer, direct labor. The hourly rate in a firm setting is usually expressed in a staffing software, more likely in the form of a billing rate or a billable rate, which again varies with position and experience of staff. The billable rate will be higher because it will include overhead and a margin for profit.
If we know a person's hourly rate, then we can find their salary by multiplying the hourly rate by the number of hours worked. For example, if Jane's hourly rate is $55 an hour and she worked full-time this year, which turns out to 2080 hours, that's 52 weeks times 40 hours a week. That produces an annual salary of $114,400 for Jane's annual salary. But again, charging Jane's rate of 55 an hour on a project will only cover her direct costs. We need to cover and account for overhead and some profit margin. This hourly rate is only covering that first layer. We also need to cover costs in this second layer and the third layer, which is attributed to profit. Let's dive into the first formula for overhead. Overhead rate is expressed as a ratio when we refer to our cake drawing instead of memorizing the actual formula. We realize that it's that second layer, the total indirect expenses. divided by total direct labor. The target range for this ratio is in the range of 1.3 to 1.5, and it is expressed as a unitless number. This ratio is then used to figure out the billable rate. Let's consider an example. Jane's firm has annual total indirect expenses that include rent and utilities in that second layer that amount to $305,000. So again, that's the cost of utilities, rent, keeping the lights on for the firm, and maybe some of the staff in the administrative department. The direct labor, which is the total of all personnel salaries working on a project, is the keyword. amounts to $230,000. Now we can find the overhead rate. Let's divide the indirect expenses by the total direct labor. And this yields a number rounded to 1.3. 1.3 is great because it falls in our target range of 1.3 to 1.5. Now what does this 1.3 really mean? Essentially it means that for every dollar spent on direct labor in that first layer or to pay for Jane's time, you'll spend as a firm a dollar thirty on overhead. So how do we capture Jane's salary plus the overhead to find a billable rate that will allow you as a firm to break even or to cover the costs from layers one and two? This brings us to our second formula breaking even. To derive the break even rate, we simply take our overhead rate formula, our overhead rate plus one. The one represents the unit cost of an hour of salary. With an overhead in our previous scenario of 1.3 plus one, equals 2.3 for a break-even rate. Now let's consider an example that brings both of these concepts of breaking even and overhead together. A client asks you for a stipulated sum after you, the architect, have reviewed and arranged the scope of services for a project. You determine the team will need three people. A job captain, a drafter, 
and a designer. You also calculate that you'll need 60 hours of time from the job captain, 38 from the drafter, and 40 from the designer. You also are given each of their hourly rate. The job captain makes 45 an hour. The drafter makes 33 an hour. The designer makes 35 an hour. Now there's two columns of information that we need to figure out here. First, we need their break even billable hourly rate. And then the total costs. The overhead rate in this problem is 1.35. To find the break-even rate, we simply take the overhead rate plus 1 equals 2.35. And now we plug in 2.35 into our calculator and multiply it by the hourly rate of each of the staff to derive the break-even billable hourly rate. So 2.35 times $45 an hour for the job captain, that's $106 an hour for the job captain. The drafter is $33 an hour multiplied by 2.35, that's 77.50 an hour. And for the designer, $35 an hour multiplied by 2.35 is 82.25 an hour. This essentially describes the amount we need to charge per hour for each of our teammates in order to break even. Now the total cost is simply multiply the break even billable hourly rate by the total number of hours on the project, which was already given. So $106 an hour multiplied by 60, 60 hours for the job captain yields 6360 $77.50 an hour multiplied by 38 hours for the drafter. That's 2945 And for the designer, $0.82.25 multiplied by 40 hours on the project is 3,290. Now we can find the total amount of our fee. Now we can find the stipulated sum fee by simply adding these three numbers in the total cost column for our team. So $6,360 plus the 2,945 plus the 3,290, that all comes out to 12,595 dollars. That would be the total fee to bill the client in order to break even for our entire team. That includes zero profit. Let's say though, we wanted to add a 20% markup for profit in addition to that 12,595 for the firm to profit on. All we do is take the fee that we came up with of 12,595, multiply that by 1.2 for the 20% markup, and we get a final amount of one of $15,114. That is our final stipulated sum that we would charge the client, and it includes our 20% markup as profit. Is there a better way to build a 20% profit margin? Well, for a full profit margin, build this bar margin based on the final price of the service, or 
the break even billable hourly rate for each of the team members. So in the previous example with the table, the job captain had an hourly break even billable rate, which we determined to be $106 an hour. The goal would be to add the 20% profit margin into their rate. That would be $106 an hour divided by the inverse of that percentage of the 20. So that would be $106 divided by the inverse, which is 0 0.8. That gives us $132.50 as the billable rate with a 20% profit margin built into that rate. Now, again, that means we're accounting in this hourly rate, not just for the job captain's direct costs, but also their indirect costs, and as a bonus, the profit in that third layer. This would be the job captain's final billable rate. If the job captain worked 60 hours, then $132.50 an hour multiplied by 60 hours, hours cancel out, gives us $7,950. Do the same for all the team members as we did in the previous problem and add their total sum. This final sum would have the 20% profit margin built in, even if they worked more or less hours, as long as the overhead costs stay the same. To summarize, the total costs that determine the fees you'll charge clients is made up of three general layers in a cake. Direct labor costs and direct expenses are billable to a project. That's your first layer. Indirect labor costs and indirect expenses are non-billable. They are business costs. And finally, the third layer is profit. Once you determine your overhead rate, which is based on the green layer and the second layer, you can also determine your break-even rate from there, which is a combination of overhead, the second layer, and this layer. Once you determine your overhead rate, you can determine your break-even rate, and from there, build in a profit margin into each employee's hourly rate to determine the best billable rate for your target profits. These billable rates will then be used to calculate the number of hours per person and the overall fees added to generate a stipulated sum, generating your gross revenue. In the next video, we'll discuss how to use the net multiplier and utilization rate formula to derive and set an even more accurate fee for your business.